Hey beloved, Krista Pettiford here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the power of personal prophecy and how to win the war that's been waged against you with your prophetic word. I wanna start by laying a foundation for a prophetic ministry. The word of God is a prophetic book. However, there are people in certain circles that believe the gift of prophecy isn't for it today. Other people water down the gift of prophecy to being the same as a pastor, one who speaks on behalf of God to his people, a shepherd. But by definition, a prophet is one who foretells future events by inspiration, an inspired speaker or foreteller. A pastor, a pastor is a shepherd of God's flock who also speaks to God's people. A person can have more than one gift. A person can be a pastor and a prophet, but they are not the same things. To prophesy means to foretell future events, to have revelation or information made known to you and inspired by the Holy Spirit. This means there's more to the prophetic than sharing what has already been made known and written in the Word of God. This is important to remember because prophecy, the prophetic gift, and the prophetic ministry, prophets are important, are an important part of the body of Christ and the church's growth individually and corporately. However, many people have abused their prophetic gift and their prophetic ministry and made people turn away from true prophecy. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 lays the foundation for the New Testament giftings. It says, and he gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The prophetic gift works within the church to help people come into their full measure in Jesus Christ, full maturity in Jesus Christ. These roles that are listed in Ephesians 4 are roles that God assigns to individuals in his church. But there are also other gifts people can operate in as the Lord leads that are not assignments. These gifts are listed in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Some of these gifts operate similarly to the prophetic gift, whereas a prophetic word foretells future world events, times, and seasons that are related to people, groups, churches, locations, nations, families, and individuals. Words of knowledge listed in 1 Corinthians 12 is having information about a person that you would not otherwise know unless the Holy Spirit revealed it to you. A word of wisdom is having wisdom and insight for a particular situation that you would not otherwise know unless the Holy Spirit again revealed it to you. There's also interpretation of tongues, translating or conveying what the Spirit is saying through the heavenly language. That could be a prophetic word, that could be a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and so these operate similarly to the prophetic gift. Then there's the seer anointing or the seer prophet, and that is one of my gifts. We see things. God often shows seers images or gives a word or a phrase in the mind that has within it a prophetic expression and revelation that he, that he also by his spirit reveals when we are sensitive and know how to follow his leading to unpack it for us. People can also have prophetic dreams and visions. The apostles Paul and John had open visions. They also had dreams. The thing is we know in part and we prophesy in part. That's the biggest thing. We're only responsible for sharing what God has shown or told us. Problems occur when people begin to add what God has said in order to please the people they are prophesying to. And that's not what we want to do. Now that I've laid a foundation about the prophetic gift, let's talk about the importance of your of personal prophecy. Personal prophetic words reveal God's will for us and what he has written in his book for us personally, his in, eternal book. 
when he says it is written of you. Jesus said it was written of me. So these words help us know and understand God's plans for us so that we can stay on the right path to fulfilling his purposes for our lives. Prophetic words build images in our minds of the future plans God has for us. They act as a compass as we navigate the seasons of our calling so that when things get hard and they will get hard for every one of us or something shows up that's less than God's best no matter how hard it is we to do we have something to cling to so that we will not go astray but we will stay the course and wait on the Lord to fulfill his promise this is why it's important for prophets to only say what God says I don't give prophetic words lightly because they are meant to help people steer their faith and their future in Christ. As it relates to my channel, if I give a general word, I know that not every word is meant for everyone. So I trust that you, the watchers, the viewers, will receive what is for you and that you will leave other words for other people. But that doesn't make it untrue. It could be a word of knowledge or wisdom, which is often mistaken for the prophetic because it works very similar. Examples of personal prophecy in the Bible. Luke 1, 31 through 33 says, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and he shall call his and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom of his kingdom there will be no end. He was talking to Mary about birthing Jesus as a virgin. And then when Mary believed, verse 45 says, Blessed is she who believed, for there shall be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. So this angel comes and tells her, foretells her future, and she believes him. But there are also prophetic words that warn us and prepare us for things to come and or pre prepare us because preparation can be for a good thing or it can be for something hard that you are going to go through. And prophetic words also reveal the plots and plans of the enemy. Acts 21, 11 through 12 says, a man named Agabus, who also had the prophetic gift or the gift of prophecy arrived from Judea. He came over, took Paul's belt, and bound his own hands and feet with it. Then he said, The Holy Spirit declares, So shall the owner of this belt be bound by the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem and be turned over to the Gentiles. So he foretold future events that Paul was going to go, go through. And God prepares us so that if it's his will, we can prepare ourselves to go through it, even if it's hard, or we can turn away like he did for Joseph and told him to go down into Egypt because they were coming to kill his son. Um, we're talking about Jesus. I could go on, but I just wanted to lay a biblical context. Now I want to talk about how to take your prophetic word and war with it. First Timothy 1 18 through 19 says this charge I commit unto you son Timothy according to the prophecies which went before on you that th that you by them might war a good warfare having faith and a good conscience which some have rejected concerning the faith and have suffered shipwreck. The word charge, this charge means mandate or command. The word war means to contend as your service or duty. And the word warfare means the assignment given to you by God as in a duty station, like if you were in the military. In other words, Paul was saying to Timothy, 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 I mandate you, I command you to contend for your prophetic word as your duty and responsibility to your God-given faith assignment. This is war. But the good news is that if you do it God's way, you will win. So beloved, it's your responsibility to fight for your prophetic word with your faith. I love 1 Timothy 1.19 in the New Living Translation. It says, Some have refused to let their faith guide their conscience, and their faith has been destroyed like a wrecked ship. When we allow our fears, feelings, or frills 
Yes, I said frill. Sometimes we get off into the flesh. I should have said fresh to flesh to guide our conscience. We are headed away from God's will and for a wreck. That's just it. When you choose not to let what God said about you guide you, you're going to be led astray from your prophetic purpose and the destiny that he has for you. Once you receive a true prophetic word, you have to know that you have an adversary, the devil, who is going to do everything he can to get you to bow, to bend, to turn back from believing what God has said and waiting on the Lord to bring his word to pass. This is why you need patience and endurance to hold on to your faith in God through life's difficult seasons when all you want sometimes is relief from the battle and, and of fighting for your word and standing in faith. Hebrews 10, 35 through 39 says, therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. You have need of patient endurance. So after that, you have done the will of God, you can receive what he has promised you. Yet the one who is coming will come soon. He will not delay. The just shall live by faith. But if we turn back, God is not pleased with him, but we do not belong with those who turn back and are destroyed. Instead, we belong with those who have faith and are saved. Know that your faith is being tested so it can produce endurance and purify you so that you can receive the will of God and be able to handle it in its fullness when it comes. As you wait on God to bring your prophetic word to pass, you war with your prophetic word by seeing yourself as God sees you and saying what he says about you instead of rehearsing what you see in the natural, instead of complaining. When all hell breaks loose in your life, or at least it seems like it, and life looks opposite from what God has spoken to you, or when you're in a waiting season and other opportunities come your way that look good, but you know they're not God and they don't line up with what God has promised you and could lead you far off of his plan for you. This is when you need to say what God says. You need to remind yourself of what God says. You need to dig in with your faith and wait on the Lord. You need to meditate on his promise and be still and keep doing what God said. Even when you miss it like Abraham and Sarah did, you can get back on track and recommit to doing it God's way. You have to get up and do this again and again and again and again until you reach the end of your assignment, until the prophetic word comes to pass. See, this is what um, those of old, the people of old had to do. Like even Mary, when she was faced with accusations, she had to bless the Lord and know what he promised her when she was pregnant and not married yet. And so this is what I have for you for now. Let me know if this teaching has helped you in the comments. And let me know if you've been given a prophetic word or if you have given someone else a prophetic word. And if your prophetic word is helping you to stay on course with what God has spoken to you. I think this is it and God bless you for watching this and let me know if you want more teachings like this. You guys know that I am preaching a lot. I'm a preacher by nature, but I also teach the word of God and lots of times I flip it back and forth and I'll preach and teach and all of that. But I want to give you guys some solid foundation for the preaching, uh, for the for the prophetic ministry. This is me contending for the faith. This is me saying that there is a place for prophetic ministry. For some, you get the gift, but you don't understand it. So you're doing it, but you're still swayed every way. For others that don't believe, I'm laying the foundation for them. Not that I can, I do, I hope and pray that they would believe. But if they don't, um, that's on them. But I want to lay a foundation on this channel for prophetic ministry so that we understand what it is and how it operates and how um, important it is and vital it is to the church today. And so God bless you and see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe to my channel um, and share this video with someone who you know would uh, be blessed by it. Again, let me know about your prophetic um, experience in the comments. God bless you until next time.